Now, when we address the, the argument theologians give, especially William Lane Craig, he's been doing this for 30 years, using this argument, uh, that requires the existence of a creator God. It goes something like this, called the Kalam, cosmological origin. Everything that begins must have a cause, the universe had a beginning, therefore the universe has a cause. Now first they argue that the universe cannot be eternal, because if it were, uh, we would never reach today, since that would take an infinite amount of time. Makes sense, doesn't it? All of Craig's arguments make good sense. He, he calls upon your common sense all the time. You have to remember though that common sense is a human facility that we have that tells us that the world is flat. <laughs> and, all, and that science has all through it. <laughs> Since the time of Newton, science has, has shown that you can't trust common sense. Okay, so this, what about this argument that the universe uh, uh, couldn't be eternal? Well, to say that the universe is eternal doesn't say that it had a beginning an infinite time ago. It says it had no beginning. We could count backward from today, year by year, and never reach the end of that sequence. So the time between now and any time in the past, a billion, billion years in the past, uh, it is never going to be infinite. It's just a billion, billion years ago, just like it was a year ago, it could be a billion, billion years ago. Uh, okay, second, so that was an argument that the universe uh, had to have a beginning. There's a, another argument why the universe had to have a beginning, and that is the Big Bang. The Big Bang uh, uh, looks like it was the beginning of our universe. Uh, the universe, and, uh, and certainly, I'm not gonna argue the Big Bang didn't happen. The, the, the evidence for the Big Bang now is very strong. I believe that it, you know, it's very convincing that there was a Big Bang. Now, but the Craig argument is that the universe started out as a singularity of infinitesimal size and infinite density. So you hear this a lot, it was a singularity. Yeah, I'm sure you've all heard that. Uh, so time must have begun at that point. Time must have begun, not just the universe. The time itself would have had to have begun at that point. Now this was shown to be a conse consequence of Einstein's theory of relativity by Stephen Hawking and Roger Penrose way back in 1970, 40 years ago. But since then, Hawking, Penrose, and other cosmologists recognize that there could not be a true singularity since quantum mechanics would modify general relativity uh, so the singularity wouldn't occur. And indeed, Hawking in his 1988 uh, blockbuster bestseller, Best History of Time, says just this. Here's, you can turn to page 50 and this is what he tells you. 22 years ago, the theologians are still out there saying there was a singularity. Not, no working cosmologist today believes that there was a singularity. So that argument fails. The third, even if the universe had a beginning, uh, it need not have had a cause. Uh, because not everything happens it, it, uh, is cause. Again, quantum mechanics is an example. In quantum mechanics, there are events that happen, atomic transitions, nuclear decays, all there are things that happen without cause. They are, they are random. Now, in recent years, theologians have also insisted that the universe is designed for life. The claim is that the parameters of physics are so delicately balanced that any slight change in life would not have been possible. So these parameters must have been, you hear the term, fine-tuned uh, by God for life. Now, of course, the parameters of physics have to be exactly what they are to get the universe and life exactly as we know them. But why shouldn't some form of life, different from ours, but still life, uh, be possible uh, or impossible with different parameters? People who claim fine-tuning make a fundamental mistake of varying one parameter while holding all the rest constant. Often a change in one parameter can be compensated by a change in another. For example, consider an atomic nucleus. The atomic nucleus is held together by an attractive force between protons and neutrons called the strong nuclear force. Now while neutrons are electrically neutral, protons have a positive electric charge and so they repel each other. 
If the strong force were slightly weaker, this is the argument, the fine tuning argument, if the strong force were just slightly weaker than it is, that repulsion uh, would split atomic nuclei apart and we wouldn't have any chemical elements uh, uh, upon which to build life. Now what the theologians will tell you is that all you have to do is weaken the electromagnetic force slightly and the nuclei will stick together once again. Now plausible natural explanations can be given for the values of the so all the so-called uh, fine-tuned parameters that people claim. Uh, and computer simulations, uh, especially in recent years, show that some kind of life, not exactly like ours, but still life, is possible over a wide range of parameters. Uh, I, I refer you to the the uh, January uh, cover story in Scientific American uh, uh, this, this, this uh, last month. They talk about just this situation. It's actually, the talk is about multiple universes, but there is a good, interesting example that they give in there. They give you the reference. You know, uh, people say that the weak interaction, uh, that's the other nuclear force, uh, has, to be, has to be fine tuned. And there's, there's a there are published papers that show that even if you had no weak interaction at all, you can still have a universe uh, with some kind of life possible. And, and, and that's, that's the result of these studies. Now, of course, we could also have many other universes. That's another story. I don't, want to, I don't want to rest my case on that argument, even though cosmology strongly suggests there are many universes out there, not just ours. We just have to live in the one that we were suited for. But I don't require that. I claim that even with, within our own universe, there's explanations for the values of the parameters uh, that they have. So there is no fine tuning, uh, despite the, the claims that you hear from the theologians. So the cosmos does not look at all as it should look if it was with the work of a flawless creator. In fact, it looks just as it should look if it came from nothing, from utter and complete chaos. Uh, you know, since we have good reason to believe that the universe began in complete chaos, if we just extrapolate the current cosmological models, so that's what you get. So even if there was a creator, no trace of that creator can exist. There is a possible God, and that's a, the deist God, the God who created the universe and then instituted complete randomness, uh, chaos, and then paid no more attention. And this is the so-called God who plays dice. And you can pray to him or her it, but it won't do you any good. Now all the other, all these, uh, all these natural explanations for our basic observations not only show that God is not necessary to understand life in the cosmos, they contradict the whole concept of a creator God. They allow us to conclude beyond a reasonable doubt that such a God does not exist. 